It doesn't matter how many LEDs I shine, I can't get this to respond at all. But if I take just one green LED, bingo. So what's so special about this LED? Now normally you just put a voltage across the LED and light comes out. This one happens to be green and no, that's not a coincidence. But a neat thing about how LEDs are made is that you can actually shine light on them and have them work in reverse like a tiny solar panel. And what I demonstrated here with my voltmeter is called the photovoltaic effect. You might have heard before solar panels being called photovoltaic cells, and that's because they operate on the same principle. Deep inside of an LED are two crystals that are lined up right next to each other. Now, there are a lot of other videos online that talk about the structure of those crystals in detail, but for our purposes, all we really need to say is that if there's an electron inside of the crystal, it sees a landscape that repeats itself regularly in all directions, kind of like it's on a checkerboard. But I said that the LED, in fact, all diodes have two different crystals. So in one crystal, some of the atoms have been replaced to create nice little comfortable places for the electrons to settle into, while on the other side, some of the atoms have been replaced, making it slightly more difficult for the electrons to settle. This creates a potential energy difference. On one side, the difficult side is higher potential energy, and on the comfortable side is low potential energy. Now when the two crystals come together, a bunch of electrons jump over from the difficult or high potential side to the comfortable low potential side. Now these, since they've settled down, create a negative charge area so that any electrons drifting through will get repelled by the like charge. This region is called the zone of depletion and creates a permanent static charge. Just like electrons jump onto a balloon when you rub it on your hair or a sweater. Now under normal operation for an LED, you pull electrons off of this side, creating new holes over here for new drift electrons to fall into. Now when they fall off of that edge, they release a certain amount of light energy. And the amount of light energy corresponds to the potential energy drop. But I said at the beginning that an LED can work backwards by converting light energy back into an electrical current. Let's try it. The main component that you'll need is some kind of a multimeter or voltmeter. In addition to your voltmeter, you're gonna wanna get at least two colors of LED. I got some green and red. Make sure to get them clear because any colored glass that covers over the crystal of the LED itself can interfere with the way light lands on the LED. And you'll also need a couple of these coin batteries, mostly because it's easy to just put them on and turn LEDs on. So the first thing we're gonna do is take one of the red LEDs and hook it up to your voltmeter. So you'll see right away that some voltage increases once you connect it. There's enough ambient light in the room right now that the light that gets in onto the crystal is causing a very tiny amount of voltage. But if you just take a uh, red LED and just shine it down into there, you can see immediately that you get an increased voltage. And that's with just one LED. Now, next interesting thing to do is to take the green one and shine it in the same fashion. Again, you get a pretty big voltage. Nothing too surprising there. But where it gets interesting and quantum physics spooky is when you try using the green LED. Now you'll notice immediately when you hook up the green LED that there isn't even any voltage. There's still ambient light in the room falling onto the LED, but it doesn't seem to be enough to get it to go. Now you might get, again, some tiny amount, but it'll be less than the red one. And if I take one of the red LEDs again and shine it on there, nothing. Maybe if I take uh, a couple LEDs, nothing. I can put a ton of these things, five LEDs, Nothing. A laser. 
nothing. There is clearly more light falling on to this LED, but the one green light can get it to have a signal. Why is this? This is weird. Do you remember the cards we made in the earlier episode? We already demonstrated that light has a wave character with our double slit experiment. Clearly, by going through the different slits, it piles up higher in some areas and it becomes diminished in others. That means that if I'm shining a whole bunch of red lights onto this green LED, that there is a bunch of light that is piling up on that crystal. It's piling up and yet it doesn't have enough energy still to cause any electrical current. It's piling up and doesn't have a current. Piling up, no current. It doesn't matter how many red photons we drop onto this electron. If each one of these photons isn't enough to kick it up over this gap, it's never going to get there. That means it's not behaving like a wave. It can't take energy from two of them at the same time, or three or five or even a thousand. No matter how many of these get dropped, the electrons stubbornly won't move. That means it's behaving like discrete little pieces of energy. However, when we have the red LED on here, stay, stay, and we shine the green light on here, there is more than enough energy. So when a green light comes in and hits the red crystal, it has more than enough energy to kick an electron loose up higher than the potential energy difference and send it cascading around the crystal because it'll get repelled from this zone of depletion, which is a permanent static charge. So we have proven that light behaves like a particle, that it moves little packets of energy around and that in a light, if there's not enough for each packet of energy to, say, move an electron, it can't do it. But didn't we prove in the last video that light behaves like a wave? Yeah, about that. In the previous experiment, we were talking about how light moved from one place to another, that it can travel on different paths at the same time like a wave does, and that those different paths can then interfere again with each other. In this experiment where we're measuring the light's kinetic energy or momentum, that is how much oomph it has when it gets to where it's going. This kind of experiment, light behaves like a particle. But in this kind of experiment, light behaves like a wave. It's actually impossible to construct an experiment that can determine simultaneously how a particle moves, its position, and how much energy it has when it gets there. It's momentum. Uh, no, not like that. This is actually two experiments because when the photon goes through the double slit, the double slit actually slightly affects the momentum of each photon and that new energy from the new momentum is actually what gets measured and what has to overcome the energy gap in the LED. This is an example of incompatible states. You usually hear this bandied about as uncertainty? The uncertainty principle, or Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, or that you can't measure the momentum and the position of a particle at the same time. But there's actually a different experiment that shows this, and that will be the subject of the third of these Quantum Basics videos. If you want to catch that, go ahead and subscribe. In the meantime, I hope you try this one out, because there's nothing quite like experiencing quantum physics for yourself. But you don't have to take my word for it, because you can science it. Oh, come on, I wanted it to turn on. There, all of you, all of you. Oh, that's fascinating. Hmm.